good morning it's actually a little bit after 11 it's saturday and i let myself sleep in till 10 which i haven't done in a long time definitely not while we've been in quarantine obviously i have work during the week and then church on sundays and then on saturday since we've been in quarantine we've actually been doing a little breakfast and bible study with some of our youth girls on saturday mornings not super early but i like to get up before that starts to get my own stuff done first but we decided last night that we weren't going to do that this morning and so i let myself sleep in this morning which was so 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 nice one thing i've been really trying to work on this year is practicing the sabbath so having one day every week where i break free from my planner my to-do list from achieving especially because for me i'm typically somebody who is very driven by those things and just taking an intentional day to rest and spend time with god and worship him and to be honest i've been better at it some weeks than others but especially as we have been in quarantine i have been taking that very seriously and i've actually done a really good job of sticking to it because i feel like i've actually somehow been more busy while we've been in quarantine part of that is that i've been using my extra time to make more youtube YouTube content which I love and I'm so excited that I get to do the other part of that is that aside from hanging out with people which I would normally be doing all of the weeknight commitments I generally have as far as Bible studies and church commitments are all still happening but over zoom and so I do feel like it's been busy and so I've been really making sure that I am setting aside a day where I'm not trying to get stuff done and I'm just resting but even in that I found that I can sometimes do things to rest that aren't actually restful they're just easy so when I spend a couple hours in a day watching TV. I don't really come away from that feeling rested. It's just sort of an easy thing to do to escape and turn my mind off. And that's not always bad, but I've just been trying to figure out what truly is restful to me and what truly allows me to connect with God. And it's sort of been a learning process. It hasn't been all bad. I've actually been practicing the Sabbath for the most part on Sundays. And then during this quarantine, my brother and sister-in-law and adorable little niece have been coming over to watch online church with us. And then we'll usually do like a family game day. So that's actually been really good. And that I think ideally is what I would want a Sabbath to look like for me is intentional time with God on my own and then time in community, time with friends and family. And that I do think is really restful, but I want to get away from just escape to something like watching TV as a form of rest and again instead find intentional ways of connecting with God and doing things that are truly restful even if they might require a little bit more effort on the front end and so that's just something I've been thinking through and figuring out and then a couple weeks ago I actually came across a video by Coffee and Bible Time I think it was Ashley but she shared a video where she set aside an entire day to spend time with God and to just be really intentional in how she was doing that and so after watching that video I was inspired to do the same thing to just set aside an entire day to spend time with God and I kind of just thought you know when else am I going to have the chance to do this because outside of quarantine there's always something going on on a Saturday and then of course Sundays there's church and then maybe the rest of the day is open but when else am I going to have the chance to set aside an entire day just simply to spend with God where I have absolutely no other commitments for the day and so that's what I decided to do for today and I've had it planned for probably a week now and so going throughout the week I've just been thinking of all these different ideas of things that I want to do today things that I have ideas to do just in my day-to-day -day life but don't have time to do of creative ways to spend time with God intentional ways to truly rest because Jesus says in Matthew 11 come to me all who are weary and heavy burdened and I will give you rest true rest is found in him and so that's what I'm going to be planning to do today and I wasn't actually planning to film this at all but I was just thinking about how it was Ashley's video that inspired me to do this. And so if I could just take you guys along with me and show you a little bit of what I'm doing today, that maybe it would inspire some of you to do the same thing. Even if you don't have an entire day to set aside, even if you just set aside a couple hours to really intentionally spend time with God, I think that that is amazing. And so I wanted to share just little snippets of what I'm going to be doing today. Again, to just hopefully encourage or inspire you to do the same thing. And maybe even to just give you some ideas of what to do when you practice the Sabbath or ways to creatively spend time with God. And so I am going to go make some breakfast and then do my normal Bible reading plan for the morning and then we will go from there. I love these pretty little roses outside my window. They just make me so happy. <laughs>
I took a little walk around my neighborhood. You've probably heard me talk about this before. I mentioned it in, I forget which video, but I started a little quarantine tradition of doing prayer walks around my neighborhood. So every single day I will take the same walk around my neighborhood. And I don't know why, but it feels like there's something significant about walking the same path every day and continuing to bring my prayers before God. And so that's what I have been doing. I showed you some snippets of my favorite little things like, I don't know, little flower bushes or whatever from my walk that always just make me happy. And so I'm actually now gonna go for a second walk of the day. I'm gonna go to a little trail in the area that is really pretty. It's a beautiful day outside. And I'm just gonna continue to pray. There's kind of a lot of things on my heart that I want to talk to God about. And so I'll show you some little snippets from that walk. Um, and then it's actually getting kind of late. I am getting pretty hungry, but I wanted to wait until after going to this trail to make lunch. So I just brought a little snack. So let's go. just waiting or looking for parking because apparently everybody wanted to take advantage of this pretty day. Oh, there's somebody just pulled out. We're gonna snag that spot. But um, that song I was just showing you, Not In A Hurry, that is not a new song, but it's one that I've been listening to a lot during this time because I feel like it's just perfect. It says, I'm not in a hurry when it comes to your presence, when it comes to your spirit, when it comes to your voice. And there's more good lyrics, but I'm blanking out on them at the moment. But if you haven't heard that song, check it out because it's super, super good. And I'm gonna try to pull into this spot now. I just got back from my little walk. It was so beautiful outside. And I think especially being in quarantine when we're all sort of in our houses for most of the day, um, it's just so important and it makes such a big difference to get a change of perspective, a change of scenery. And I think especially there's something about being outside, at least I know for me, that draws me closer to God um, or just allows me to feel closer to him. I wanted to show you more of those lyrics I was referencing before, so let me pull out my phone. Again, this is a song, Not In A Hurry by United Pursuit and Will Reagan, and it says, Lord, I don't wanna rush on ahead in my own strength when you're right here. I'm not in a hurry when it comes to your spirit, when it comes to your presence, when it comes to your voice. I'm learning to listen just to rest in your nearness. I'm starting to notice you are speaking. And again, I just feel like this is a really great song, especially for right now. And I love what it says there that I'm starting to notice you are speaking. I really believe that God is constantly speaking to us, but I think that so much of the time we don't hear what he's saying or we miss it because our lives are so busy and we just fill it with so much noise, whether that is busyness or or just constantly keeping our minds stimulated with things like social media or TV or I don't know, like what I was talking about before, sort of escaping and not truly experiencing the rest that comes when we really slow down, settle our minds and our hearts so that we can begin to hear God speaking more. And so, yeah, today has just been really nice getting to do that a little bit. And again, I just encourage you, if this isn't something you've tried before, to try it out because I really believe that when we start to slow down, we begin to just hear and be more in tune with what God is speaking to us. So I'm gonna go make some lunch now because it's like three o'clock. All right, so I'm gonna make my lunch. Before I do that, I have been craving chocolate covered strawberries. So I picked up some stuff at the grocery store to make them last time I went. Um, and I wanna make them now so that they have time to set so I can enjoy them later. But I got these Lily's dark chocolate baking sweets. One, because everybody knows dark chocolate is the best. And then this brand has no added sugar. So I'm excited to try that out. Got my strawberries here. I've actually never made chocolate covered strawberries before. I can't imagine that they're too difficult, but I'm just gonna look up how to do that and get those going so I can have them later. Perfect, but they're gonna be yummy. I'm 
gonna go ahead and eat my lunch and then i'm also going to journal this is one of those things that is so 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 helpful in my life but that i don't always make time for just in the day to day i do try to do a little bit every day um, if you've seen the scribe bible journal I use it has a little space for that of praying and just kind of writing things you're thankful for And so I will sometimes journal or prayer journal in those areas But I think that it's also really beneficial Every now and then I know it's probably not super realistic to do every day But to spend a longer amount of time journaling and just processing through things going on in your life or on your heart and so i'm going to spend some time doing that it's so cool that we can go to god with anything that we can go to him in our joy we can go to him when we have a situation we don't know how to respond to we can go to him when we are hurting when we're sad when we're disappointed we can go to him in all of our emotions and he wants to hear it he wants to meet with us and so i just wanted to share that that if you've got something going on in your life something weighing on your heart I think that's another one of those areas where it can be a lot easier to escape and to just scroll through social media or binge watch Netflix because sometimes it's easier to run from those things that we don't want to deal with or don't want to figure out. But I just encourage you that if there's something going on to turn to God with it because I think you're going to feel so much more peace in doing so. So I'm going to take my own advice and do that right now. So I decided to drive on down to the marina. I am so excited. I'm going to do something I never get to do. So I love listening to sermons. Usually I will listen to them on my commute because it's about 45 minutes, but um, nobody's commuting right now. So I really haven't been listening to sermons much aside from the online church service on Sundays. And I really haven't been listening or watching long form content in general. So like podcasts or anything, it's mainly been, you know, 10 to 20 minute YouTube videos, but I really love listening to sermons. For me, it's something that really helps draw me closer to God and and just encourages my love for him and my love for reading the Bible. But like I said, I'll normally listen to them while I'm commuting or maybe while I'm working out or doing laundry. Like I'm never just sitting there and listening to that and not doing anything else. It's sort of always while I'm doing something else. And I don't know why, but for whatever reason, it sounded so nice to do that, to just listen to a sermon and not do anything else, but pay full attention to it and take notes and just be able to fully soak it in. And so I drove down here to the marina. As you can see, the sun is really in my face because it's about to set, but right now it's just blinding me. But I just thought it would be nice to do that while watching the sunset over the bay and then I also brought my strawberries haven't even eaten dinner yet but um they just looked too good and I needed to eat them but it kind of made me think because I realized I'm bringing chocolate covered strawberries to go watch the sunset and listen to a sermon this kind of feels like a date and without sounding too cheesy I kind of realized that that in a way is what sabbath is it's like a day date with god if you watched my how to build a relationship with god video then you know I'm a big fan of this analogy but if you think about how married couples talk about having a date night and the importance of that and the importance of building that rhythm into their routine Teens. The purpose of that date night is to have a time where you are breaking from just the day-to-day -day life to have intentional time that you're spending together without all the other stuff that's going on in your life. But for a married couple, it's not like that date night is the only time they're connecting throughout the week. They're in constant communication throughout the week and they're talking, but it could be more of that day-to-day -day type communication, whereas a date night is a chance to really just intentionally connect and focus on each other. And in the same way, Sabbath, it's not or it shouldn't be the only time that we spend with God throughout the week. We should be connecting with him every day, spending time with him every day. But this is a time to really be more intentional in that and maybe be able to go deeper and just pause and focus intentionally on your relationship with God and worship him. And so again, a Sabbath shouldn't be the only time you do that. Just like going to church on a Sunday shouldn't be the only time that we spend with him. But it is a time to be more intentional and to maybe go beyond how we're able to interact with him on a more day-to-day -day basis when we have just the busyness of our lives happening. And so I am gonna play this sermon, I'm gonna enjoy my strawberries, and I'll show you guys when the sun starts to set. Here's what it looks like right now. You can see why it was blinding me. But I've got my strawberries, yum, and then my journal and pen over here. And then I think I'm gonna listen to this sermon by the Bridgetown church in portland it says sign seeking and the scarcity mindset that just kind of grabbed my attention but it's from their gospel of matthew series so we'll see what this is about gonna take some notes and just enjoy this i'm excited my image of myself in my mind doesn't always correspond to reality 
All of us are aiming to make sense of the world, to see, to, to hear, and to understand deeper realities of substance, of meaning, of divinity. NPR and they said this, when you realize that something important is missing in your life, your brain can only seem to focus on that one thing. When you really want something, you start to focus on it obsessively. When you're hungry, it's hard to think of anything other than food. Scarcity, or I would add even perceived scarcity, produces a kind of tunnel vision. And it explains why when we're in a hole, we often lose sight of long-term priorities and dig ourselves even deeper. Notice this in yourself, that each time you get that thing, you have this thing you wanted as soon as you get it, you want something else. That sermon was so, so good. Um, I'm really glad that I was able to listen to it this way where I just, it was all I was doing and I was taking notes on it because I know that if I was listening to that on a commute, that would have been great, but I just know that there's so much more I got from it from being able to really pay full attention and take notes. I think there's a lot of things I would have missed if I was listening to it another way and so, I'm just glad that I got to do that. I want to read a couple notes I took from the sermon. So without going into the full story, it was 45 minutes, so I'm not going to be able to capture it all. But it was on Matthew chapter 16, and Jesus is rebuking the disciples for their lack of faith and for this scarcity mindset that they're having. And so I just want to read a couple of the notes that I took. It says that the disciples missed how Jesus is moving because they are preoccupied with the material need in front of them. They were consumed, and it was all they could see. And then it defines scarcity mindset as a way of thinking marked by believing there will never be enough. And as a result, our need becomes all we can see. We begin to see the whole world through the lens of what we do not have, through that thing that we don't have that we're just fixated on. And this is a problem, one, because it blinds us from seeing God's work in our lives. It was talking about how the disciples had just witnessed these two crazy miracles and now they're worried that there's not gonna be enough bread. And so they were so fixated on this need in front of them that they were blinded from recognizing the work that God was doing. And then two, it stops us from hearing his voice. It produces this tunnel vision where again, what we don't have becomes all we can see and we're fixated on it. And then what really got me was um, a note I wrote down from the sermon. It said he was talking about how to buy into a scarcity mindset is to buy into a lie about God. And this is why when the scarcity mindset is seen in the disciples that Jesus rebukes them by saying you of little faith because they were not seeing God correctly for who he is. And I wrote down this note that says, God is a kind and generous father who actually cares for you. When God looks at you, let this sink in because I know I'm having to let this sink in. When God looks at you, his heart swells with adoration of you. He doesn't care for you out of obligation. He cares for you because he wants to. And what if he is inviting you to see him correctly? And again, I'm sharing that with myself because I know that I, in a lot of ways, buy into the scarcity mindset and I don't see God as actually wanting to care for me, to provide for me, to bless me. Um, I a lot of times see that as something that I have to convince him to do, but this isn't anything that God does out of obligation. He does it because of who he is and because of his love for us and because we are his children. And so I'm just going to be thinking through that a little bit more. Um, I think I'm actually going to head home now and make some dinner. So I think I'm going to end the vlog here, but I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that it encouraged you to just spend some time with God, to stop, to break from productivity and to just be with him. I know that this day was so needed for me and so yeah I hope that you enjoyed this and it just gave you some ideas of maybe ways you can spend time with God if you have ways of spending time with God that you really love I would love to hear that down in the comments just creative ways to connect with him so leave a comment down below if you have one of those thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one bye